So we're standing in front of a painting that's been absent from the cathedral now for perhaps six or seven years um, and has only recently returned to a new location and a new presentation. It is a great rarity amongst treasures of various cathedrals, of all cathedrals and churches. It is part of the bishop's throne of Bishop John Marshall, who was Bishop of Landeff from 1478 to 1496. The painting was originally the back of the bishop's throne. And what it depicts is something that was a favorite subject in the uh, 15th century. It is, is showing the assumption of the Virgin, the Catholic belief that either at her death or shortly afterwards, the Virgin Mary was taken bodily into heaven. And what we see in this painting is in the center there, the Virgin wrapped, uh, dressed in her fine clothes, surrounded by what we call the mandola, uh, uh, um, almond shape uh, ring of gold to show her sanctity. And in her, this mandola, and therefore carrying her up into heaven, are six angels supporting her. As she leaves earth, in the bottom of the painting, you can see another angel swinging a censer uh, to give her there. And as she goes up, she is received into heaven by angels playing musical instruments. The angels are rather prettily depicted riding on clouds there to receive her. Now, also in this picture, of great interest, is the fact that as she ascends to heaven, she is being worshipped by John Marshall himself, Bishop Marshall, who is kneeling down, holding his hands in prayer. And from his mouth, which is shown in the form of a banner preceded from it, is what he is saying is, Oh, in Latin, but translated into English, it would be, O Virgin, who mounts in state, open to marshal heaven's gate. And then down in the other corner is another angel holding the coat of arms of Bishop Marshall. As I said at the beginning, this painting is a great rarity, and indeed it is almost a minor miracle that it still exists today and can be displayed in the cathedral. The reason for this is in the shortly after Bishop Marshall's life, of course, came the Reformation. And during the course of the Reformation, Many religious works of art were destroyed by the Protestants. Now, in particular, what would have been a proper tar a target for most Protestants would be almost anything to do with the Virgin, but particularly this idea of the Virgin being taken he into heaven his or her body be taken bodily into heaven because the Protestants said that this was, there was no warrant for this in the Bible and it was simply something that had been developed uh, in times which it shouldn't have been. Now, how at that stage this painting avoided being destroyed we simply just don't know. Uh, you can give various things. You can say Land of Cathedral was too distant, too obscure to attract much attention. Uh, but uh, personally, I think the reason would be 
that in fact it was not an object of devotion. It was simply part of the bishop's throne. So it survived that period. And then the following century, of course, there came the Puritan Revolution, the overthrow of the monarchy uh, by the uh, Puritan armies. Uh, and during the course of that, Land of Cathedral itself was mostly closed for public worship. It was, in fact, converted into stables, uh, a calf pen, uh, even feeding pigs inside the cathedral. Now, we do know how it survived that period because the parishioners of this area covered the painting with lamp black so that it just uh, escaped attention. The restoration of the monarchy came and the painting was once more revealed. But then in the 18th century, Lando Cathedral, which by that time had fallen into a general state of ruin, underwent a restoration. It was restored by an architect, John Wood of Bath, who didn't like Gothic work. And so there wasn't enough money to repair the whole cathedral, but he, he did repair half the cathedral, but he converted it into a classical building. And in the course of doing that, he threw out all the medieval furniture in the cathedral. Now there is inscribed on the painting right down on the bottom of one of the angels sings, just simply a little remark saying, this was part of Bishop Marshall's throne and was set here um, in 1736 by, and then gives the name of two joiners or carpenters who were working here. What happened in fact was the painting was put or displayed, we're not quite sure what, in a canopy that was over the new high altar of the cathedral. Now, why this was done, we, again, we, we really don't know. But anyway, it was done. And then was rediscovered in the 19th century. In the 19th century, possibly because of the Catholic nature of what was being shown, uh, the painting, in fact, was taken away and displayed in the bishop's palace at the time. Then, in 1926, I think it was, uh, a very serious fire broke out in the bishop's palace. But very fortunately, this painting was one of the things that was saved at that stage. And so, it has survived. It was then sent back to the cathedral during the war. It was when the bomb destroyed or did considerable damage to the cathedral. It had already been taken away and put into safekeeping in a church elsewhere in Wales. And then after that returned to the cathedral and was put on display where it was moved around. Uh, eventually, this it has been determined that it'll come here to a spot in the cathedral, which may strike people as being rather dark, but this is quite deliberate. What is, was intended was that it should not be exposed to sunlight, and it is also the one area of the cathedral that has a fairly constant temperature. And so the opportunity is taken that you can come and see it now. Uh, we've just been looking at one of the survivals of the furnishings of the medieval cathedral. Now, in fact, very little, in fact, nothing else exists that had been in the medieval cathedral of Landov because of the troubles that Landov Cathedral has gone through in its life. However, 
in the post-war restoration of the cathedral, uh, the architect, George Pace, and the then dean, Glyn Simon, seem to have had a, a high old time scouring through antique shops to find things that could be used to decorate the cathedral. Now, amongst the things that they found and used uh, were some medieval works of art. And so I thought it would be suitable to have a look at those in connection with the uh, martial panel. And this one is perhaps the most suitable to talk about immediately after looking at the martial panel, because where does that painting depicted the uh, and the assumption of the Virgin after, at her death or after her death. This, in fact, is a depiction of, her, of the Virgin dying. Um, this is usually called, the, the phrase, the death of the Virgin is not usually used. Usually the word is the dormition, the falling the sleep of the Virgin. Now, this work here, uh, is probably uh, German, dating from about 1420, uh, and it probably was part of a larger work of art. But it does stand up well to being an individual work of art. Now, in this uh, uh, sculpture, one can see the Virgin lying on her deathbed, Around her are grouped all the apostles. Uh, holding her hand and reading to her is St. Peter. On the other side of her, and originally would have been holding a candle uh, in his hands, but that has disappeared, is St. John. All the others, some others, are reading and so on. But there, are, there is one figure that usually arouses a, a great deal of interest and even, I would say, incredulity. It is the figure in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the sculpture. If you look very, very closely, and you have to do that, you will see it is a man with a pair of spectacles. A lot of visitors that we have look at that and say, well, they, they didn't have glasses or spectacles in 1420. Well, I'm afraid they did. Precisely that, they had it. Now, this particular apostle is looking very closely at a, a scroll or, of some sort. Now, who is he? Who is this apostle? Well, it's St. Matthew. Now, if you know your Bible, you will know that St. Matthew, before he became an apostle, was a tax collector. And this is a little bit of humor on the part of the sculpture to show that St. Matthew, even though he was an apostle, uh, regarded attentively, presumably, the, um, the records, the uh, money records of the Virgin's household and examining the figures very, very closely. I mentioned that, the, uh, that George Pace and Lynn Simon searched places. Now, George Pace, when he was doing his design for this area, intended there to be a light screen, as he called it, dividing the sanctuary area here from the Lady Chapel behind it. And he decided this light screen would be made by what's, what would be very traditional very often, um, a, a, a crucifix and six candles. Uh, he found, they found in uh, an antique shop somewhere six uh, candlesticks dating from the 17th century. At the same time, or shortly afterwards, they also found 
this figure on this cross. Now, where does the candlesticks date from the 17th century? That figure, in fact, is medieval. Again, it comes from Germany, uh, and it dates probably from 1450 or something like that. In some ways, it's typical of German art, in as much by that stage, there was a great emphasis in German art when dealing with the crucifixion of emphasizing the reality, uh, the straining body, the pain, the agony of, of this. And so uh, this is very typical of that period and that approach, uh, particularly the nails sticking through the feet, which very often is not depicted in many works of art. Um, the cross itself well, is in fact modern. It was made to match uh, the other things, uh, and, but this time not to bear a candle, but to bear the cross and the figure of Christ on it. But I think a lot of people would be hard put to tell that in fact it, it isn't of the same period as the other things. This is, we've now moved into the David Chapel or the Royal Welsh Chapel, chapel that was built completely new after the uh, Second World War during the course of the uh, complete restoration of the cathedral. Um, uh, but things were bought to decorate this as well. So standing on a piece of medieval uh, stonework, we have this very fine uh, statue or carving of a bishop. Uh, the, almost certainly this is Flemish and again it dates from the 15th century. And it's very fine, the work on the robes and this very sensitive face of the bishop makes it a, a very striking uh, addition, in fact, to the furnishings uh, of, the, of the cathedral. Uh, the croisier, the staff of the bishop, is in fact modern. Uh, we've just moved around the uh, David Chapel. Uh, one of the glories of the David Chapel is the plain glass windows. This was deliberate intention of George Pace to have light flooding into uh, this chapel and it's very nice. But the, um, in one window he has made use of panels of medieval glass eight panels of medieval glass, I hope it is eight panels of medieval glass, which were provided by um, people in memory of two officers of the Welsh regiment, to whom this uh, chapel is, of course, a, a comm commemoration, a memorial. Uh, the, panel, the glass panels are interesting as being the oldest stained glass in Land of Cathedral. We have no stained glass of our own from the me medieval period. Not surprise, uh, not a great surprise. But these panels uh, date from the 15th century again, or possibly the beginning of the 16th century. And again, they are Flemish. North France, Belgium, that kind of area. They are separate panels in a sense. They may originally have come from one window, uh, but they are not ones, they're not uh, like most stained glass windows, ones telling stories or having a, a union. They are separate panels. Uh, we have depictions of various saints, prophets, 
uh, and other people there as individuals. But mostly the panels show parts of a crowd uh, looking at things, what they were originally looking at, we, we have no idea. Uh, but they, they are, make a, f a fine impression and are particularly appropriate because immediately below it are the books of remembrance uh, for the Welsh Regiment with the names of all the people who were killed in the two world wars there. And this kind of splash of colour uh, draws attention to that.